So welcome back to the Survivor Series, and this is absolutely a Survivor, a 20-year-old 911 Turbo. It's a 996 variant, and this car is 20 years old and hasn't even hit 40,000 kilometers in miles. That's less than 25,000 miles, which means over 20 years, the previous owner has only put on about 1,200 miles a year. So an absolutely pristine example. And once again, thanks to Core Motor Cars here in Vancouver for letting me borrow this car for the day so I can show you what you should be looking for if you're looking for a nice example of a Porsche. This is absolutely it. I do get quite a bit of correspondence from people because I've owned several Porsches and I talk about them when I get to drive these older ones asking me, you know, maybe I'm thinking about buying my first Porsche. I have this amount of money to spend. What's the best one that I can get? And my answer is always condition, condition, condition. Spend the most money you can on the best example that you can find. A car like this is a perfect example of that. This car is absolutely flawless. It's 20 years old. It doesn't even have 40,000 kilometers on the clock. And just look at the bodywork. It's straight as a pin. It's a local Vancouver car. It is fully serviced and ready to go. So this is the kind of car you want to buy. You don't want to buy an older car and have to plow a bunch of money into it to get it to end up looking like this. Just spend the money, save more, and buy a good example. Now this is a 996. This is the era, the very first water-cooled cars after they got rid of the air-cooled classic 911s. And these were unloved for 10 plus years, ever since they came out. They depreciated much quicker than other 911s, but now the tide is turning. Now people are looking at these as real value, and the turbo is the one to get. So let's get inside. We'll talk about why this car kind of fell through the cracks and why an example like this is actually a nice car to pick up. Now, regular viewers of this series know I talk about enthusiasts and how enthusiasts pick winners and losers in the Porsche community. And for a long time, this generation of 911 was unfortunately chosen as a loser because of the headlamps. When this car came out, uh, the headlamp design changed. A lot of people didn't like it. It ended up being called the fried egg headlamp because it looks like, kind of like an egg on a frying pan. And as time has gone by, though, I can say that I, I like the overall look of this car more and more. So back then, it was so different from what we had before with the 993. Then they brought this model out, so it was quite radical. So the design at the front was different. You had a water-cooled engine pushing it at the back. The interior was all new as well. So a lot of pushback on that. And then started to surface mechanical problems with the non-turbo cars. So the turbo has a different engine. Now, if you're a regular viewer of these, you know I talk about Hans Metzger, the engineer at Porsche that developed the engine that is sitting behind me. I'll talk more about that when we go for a drive. So this car has a different engine than all of the other 996s, but it still has the same headlamps. But as I mentioned, as time has gone by, um, I've kind of warmed to the overall design. And, and because of that, this represents a good value. So it's not about being the cheapest car, it's about being the least expensive. And if you're looking for a 911 Turbo, this generation 996 is the least expensive. All right, quickly on the inside, because it doesn't have a big screen, it's got what's called a single DIN uh, radio, just a standard Porsche sort of AM, FM, CD player here. Um, it actually has kept this car looking kind of up to date because when you get in cars that have the older screens, they look really old, right? You go, oh, that's a real 2005 sort of screen, but it doesn't have a screen. It's just got a radio. So it's just a simple execution of a 911. Beautifully finished on the inside. This one's got the carbon treatment on the center console, the shifter, the steering wheel, and the handbrake. It's got that. And of course, it's got a full leather interior because it's a turbo. It also has power and heated seats and automatic climate control. So very nicely equipped. Let's start it up and I'll tell, them more, tell you more about it. All right. God bless Hans Metzger. <laughs> 3.6 liter all wheel drive, 415 horsepower, and a car that I can clearly tell you is one of the nicest preserved vehicles that I have driven. This thing is absolutely like it was brand new. And you know what's interesting? I get to drive all the new Porsches 
and I haven't driven a 996 uh, turbo since this car was out, you know, all those years ago. And it's one hell of a machine, I'll tell you that. And one of the things is when you're sitting in this seat, you don't see the headlamps in the front. And as I mentioned, I've really come to warm to the design. At the time, I didn't love it. I owned two 993s, the car that was before this. And to me, it looked really foreign. But now that time's gone by and there's been all kinds of radical designs of vehicles, this one is like, eh, it looks good. Plus, when you get the 911 Turbo, you get the wide body. And I think this era of 911 looks the best on the wide body cars. Oh, one thing. The wheels on this car are turbo twists, and this is my favorite era of turbo twists. They're thicker and chunkier than the cars that came before, and I just love it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic on this car. So as I mentioned, when you buy an older 911, so this car's 20 years old, you want to find the best example you can. When you buy a used car, you're buying the previous owner's dedication to maintenance and looking after it. Because if the previous owner didn't take care of the car, um, it shows. And it can be very, very expensive to fix. But if you find one like this that's been absolutely flawlessly maintained, well, they're actually not that expensive to keep them running. You do the regular service on a regular basis, and this car, because it has that Metzger engine in the back, uh, will run indefinitely, and it is really well put together. So I've mentioned it before in some other videos, Hans Metzger just passed away about a year ago, and he was uh, sort of the grandfather of these engines. And the Metzger engines are very, very reliable. They have much lower maintenance costs than the engines that were sold at this generation because those engines could break down. There was a big bearing at the back of the engine that could break free, and when that happened, the engine basically was grenaded. So this thing is bulletproof, it's very well made, and will stand the test of time. So people in the know want a Metzger-designed engine, and that's what we have in this. 415 horsepower, manual transmission, that's a big part about the value. Uh, you know, a lot of guys like the faster PDK and the Tiptronic transmissions because they might be quicker at the track, but for resale value, especially with an older 911, you want a manual transmission. It's way more fun, come on, way more fun. So hopefully the takeaway from this is there's a difference between cheap and inexpensive. If you buy the cheapest Porsche that you can find, it's gonna cost you a whole boatload of money getting it fixed up to where you want it. You should actually look for the best example you can, and this is a perfect example of that. And once again, thanks to Core Motor Cars here in Vancouver for letting me borrow this very low mileage 996 Turbo for the day. It's absolutely flawless. But what I mean by the least expensive is this 996 now is the least expensive turbo that you can buy. So when you compare it to 997s and 993s and the newer cars, this looks like a relative bargain. The prices have come up and stabilized. We don't have a crystal ball, but if I was a betting man, I would say that a car like this 10, 20 years down the road will become collectible.